Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to All Things Mechanical. My name is JB. This is the first time in 2023 that I'm uh, getting to post a video, so Happy New Year. I hope you guys all had a very enjoyable and safe holiday season with your families. Also something worth noting, just broke through 2,000 subs back on Christmas Day, so that was a wonderful Christmas present for me. We've actually gone up to like 2,030 something now, I believe, as of this moment, so for all my new subscribers, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate you guys being here and clicking that subscribe button and sticking around. So, what are we talking about today? Well, today I'm talking about something that you guys probably already have in your house in one form or another. These things have been around for years and years and years, but surprisingly, it is a tool that I don't have or didn't have until last week. So let me turn the camera around. I'll get it set up. We're going to talk about this tool, what it can be used for, why I decided on this particular model, where you can get it, and we're going to compare some of the other tools from different manufacturers against this one, and I'm going to tell you why I picked it over the competition, which is actually pretty extensive. There's four or five other ones that we're going to be looking at here. So a little bit of talking in this video, a lot of explanation, and we are going to be staring at my computer screen for a little bit. So if that's not your thing, feel free to skip away from this video and move on to something else. But we're going to be talking about this guy from Ryobi, a cordless screwdriver, simple enough. So let's go ahead and get the camera turned around and we'll get started. All right, guys, here we go. I apologize in advance for the mess here. I actually have like two or three other projects going on here simultaneously. As you can see, I got one of my guitars torn apart. Video's coming on that. Got another item hiding under the desk here. Gonna be a video series coming on that. Got a lot going on. So I got guitar strings and parts and pieces and tools and crap everywhere. So ignore the clutter. Let's just focus on this guy for right now. Like I mentioned in the intro, this is a Ryobi cordless screwdriver. This is a fantastic tool and it only costs $24.99. You can find these at Home Depot. This is part number FVD50K. Again, very, very simple tool. Comes with a two amp hour rechargeable lithium ion battery. And the best part about it is that you can integrate it with any type of tools that you already own because the battery charges by itself with a USB-C charging cable that comes with this. The only thing that you need to supply on your own is a little wall wart charger that the USB cable plugs into, but I think all of us have probably 50 of those things at this point kicking around our houses, so that's really not a big deal. And if for whatever reason you don't have one of those things, you can get them for like five bucks on Amazon and have them the next day usually. So this is a great setup for just about anybody. This is something that I've actually needed for a long time. Now, anybody can take one of these and put you know put it in one of the uh, little impact drivers that you get from Makita, Milwaukee, DeWalt, what have you. Usually come with the drill driver combo sets. You guys have seen me use my Makita drill driver combo set for just about everything, including stuff like this, you know, fastening and unfastening screws and bolts and whatnot. But sometimes when you're working on things like guitars or guns or electronics or whatever and you need to make a a quick adjustment or you need to unscrew a whole bunch of fasteners like what I'm doing with this Telecaster where I've got the entire pit guard to take off, I have a whole bunch of saddles to remove from the bridge, you know, and you've got all kinds of repetitive things that you need to do. Having a lower speed tool like this, it can get into spaces a little bit easier and as a lighter, more maneuverable tool than a, you know, an impact driver, that's a really big advantage to have. That's why I wanted to get one of these things. And when I saw the price, I just jumped on it immediately because you don't have to, ha you can, it doesn't matter what other kinds of tools you own. I've always been hesitant to buy stuff from DeWalt or, you know, Ryobi or Rigid or what have you. That's a battery operated tool just because I don't want to have three or four different kinds of chargers kicking around my house. I already have a bunch of Milwaukee and Makita stuff. I don't want more than that. So seeing this and realizing that you can just charge the battery on the fly without having to have a dedicated charging cradle for it, that was perfect. And for 25 bucks, actually out the door for me, this was $24.07 because with my military discount, that's 10% off plus tax. I was out the door at Home Depot in Utah for under $25. $24.07 is what this thing cost me. That is a stellar deal for, for any tool made by Ryobi. Now, is Ryobi the best tool manufacturer in the world? Well, guess what? That's subjective just like everything else in this world is. There's no one best thing for anybody here. But for my needs, this fit the bill perfectly because all of the other options, with the exception of stuff from like Harbor Freight or Ace Hardware, is way more expensive, like four, four to six times more expensive than this thing was. So the neat thing about this, let me go ahead and plug this battery back in. If I could put it in the right way, that would help, huh? So 
the neat thing about this is a two position tool, but with using this gray switch up top here, you can rotate this around and it locks in place and now you have a completely different profile to the tool so you can get into more areas a lot more easily or you can convert it back into pistol grip mode and use it as like a, a, a regular impact driver. This is a very low speed, low torque tool, at only 200 RPMs. Got two built-in SMD LED lights in the front that stay on for about three seconds after you let off the trigger. You have your uh, adjustment switch right here so you can convert it back from one mode to the other. Now, it will still run when you have it in like a weird off angle position like this. It's just, it's not locked. So, I mean, if you had some really wonky thing that you needed to get access to, you could probably use it for that. But it will not lock if it's not, if it's either in one position or the other. Um, you have a forward and reverse selector right here on the back with a middle position, which is a neutral lockout. So you can turn the LED lights on and they'll stay on as long as you hold this thing. So you can kind of use it as a little, you know, search flashlight if you're looking for something. And then as soon as you let off the trigger, you got that three second countdown and the lights turn off again. So really simple, well-engineered tool from Ryobi with their standard yellowish green plastic, but a nice gray rubberized textured grip right here. So if you're working in the garage, you get oil on your hands, you sweat a lot, you get sweaty palms or whatever, you'll still be able to hang on to this thing. There is onboard bit storage right here. This will hold one of these two inch bits or it will hold two one inch bits. And I think we all have probably a set of those kicking around somewhere in the garage. Um, this is a standard hex drive uh, quarter inch collet and it's mag a magnetic chuck on here. So there's no quick release or anything. No nothing locks in, but it's a very snug fit and there's a magnet in the base to hold on to those things. So it ain't coming out. Don't worry about that. So I've been really, really happy with this. Like I said, I used it to take apart this whole guitar. I'm using it for a whole bunch of things. I've had it for about a week now. And you don't realize how much you're going to use something like this until you get your hands on it. So I think that for the money, this is an absolutely fantastic tool. What you get with the kit, um, this is, I hate these blister packs. This is clearly not frustration free packaging. I had to kind of go at it with a knife. Um, but what you get in the kit are the two bits. This is actually one that came with it. You get a Phillips head. I think it's a number two Phillips and then a number two uh, regular screwdriver bit for it. You get your charging cord, which again, I want to emphasize is USB-C. This is the latest iteration of USB style charging cables. These have been out for six or seven years now, I believe. And there are still manufacturers out there using micro USB for their brand new tools, which absolutely blows my mind because micro USB is the bane of my existence when it comes to stuff in a dirty garage environment. I guarantee you, sooner or later, that charging port or the charging cable itself will bend, the tabs will break, and it will not charge. I hate micro USB, it absolutely sucks. USB-C is light years ahead of that because it's not a directional plug. You can put it in in either direction. There's no pins to bend or break or whatever. So kudos to Ryobi for going with that and not just uh, dipping to the, the easy crowd and picking something that is probably cheaper. Although this shouldn't be a whole lot more expensive. I mean, these have been around a while now. So anyway, so you get your charging cable, you get your battery, you get the two bits, and then you get your user guide and warranty card and everything that comes tucked into the clamshell packaging here. So really simple kit for 25 bucks. It's fantastic. Now, I know that I have sung the praises of Milwaukee and Makita for years and years now on my channel, and I still maintain that. They absolutely make fine power tools, but... DeWalt, Rigid, Ryobi, none of those guys are slouches. I had Makita to begin with just because I like the fit and finish. I like the way they fit in my hand. But when I moved to the ranch and started working out there, the shop out there already had invested really heavily in Milwaukee stuff. So I did the same thing because it allowed me to buy my own tools. But if I needed to swap out a battery or something, there was already a charging bank with like eight batteries ready to go. So I always had access to a fresh battery. I didn't have to run all the way back to my house and charge up my own stuff in order to continue working. So that was the reason that I started investing in Milwaukee and I've been very happy with Milwaukee. Um, that being said, if this had its own charging cradle, I probably wouldn't have got it. And it probably wouldn't only be 25 bucks to be completely honest, let's just be real here. But because this has a standalone charging system that you just plug the battery into the wall, there you go, you can integrate this with anything you already have. So that's the primary reason why I got it. But Let's take a look real quick at some of the other options that other manufacturers offer. So what I'm gonna do here is move this thing over. I'm gonna point you right at my computer screen and we're gonna take a look and we're just gonna go through the different things that I considered before actually pulling the trigger on this. And I actually looked for a while until I, I found the deal on this at Home Depot. So let's head over to the computer here and have a look. 
All right, guys, we're back over at the computer here. Now, I've got this thing angled the best I can so you guys can hopefully read all of it. I don't have a screen reader or anything set up, so it's a little bit harder for me to actually get screenshots of stuff as I'm talking here. But we're on the main Ryobi website right now, and just a point of fact, what I'm going to do for each one of these things that we're looking at, I'm going to pull up the main manufacturer's website, and then I'm going to pull up a big box store where you can actually go out and buy one of these things. And I'm going to show you the current price, current market value for those particular stores. I am not going to be going off of any online vendors, Amazon, or anything like that, mostly because that's bitten me in the butt before. When you buy tools from Amazon, a lot of the times they're being sold by third-party vendors through Amazon and not Amazon itself. When you do that, when you buy a power tool from a third-party vendor like that, and sometimes even Amazon.com, a lot of the times, unless Amazon has an agreement with that manufacturer, the manufacturer's warranty will not apply unless you buy the tool from an authorized vendor. So for that reason alone, I am not going to show you the super low bare bones price that you could get if you buy it from some certain website. I don't know if you can get them any cheaper than what I'm showing you at Home Depot or Harbor Freight or Ace Hardware or whatever we're going to be looking at. But I'm just going off of places that you can actually walk in, grab the tool off the shelf and pay for it. That way there's no mistakes, no surprises. That way, if you ever have a problem with it, you're not going to get bitten like I did with one of my Milwaukee tools several years ago. I've already talked about that in other videos. I'm not going to go back into it here, but that is just something to be aware of. So anyway, we have the main Ryobi website pulled up here. Again, this is the Ryobi USB lithium line. Um, the cool thing about this is that there are other tools in this lineup that you can use these same batteries in. Um, I'm not going to go into any details on that just because I want to focus on the screwdriver, but most of the ones we're looking at are part of a tool lineup. So you can buy other tools in that same lineup and use the same batteries in it. So what we're going to do here is have a look at the specs. So we got the Ryobi cordless screwdriver here pulled up on Home Depot's website. And again, $24.97. I think I said $24.99. Whatever. Close enough. Um, they have it marked at $39.97, and it says special buy right now. So I don't know if this price is going to be uh, a continuous thing that they're doing, but even at $40, bucks, I think it's still worth it. But for $25, just go get one and have it in your drawer and use it. It is a fantastic little tool. Um, we've already gone over some of the features of it. It has the flashlights in the front. It has the quarter-inch hex drive, bit storage on the bottom. It is a convertible straight and pistol grip profile, and it uses the 2 amp hour. USB 2.0 batteries from Ryobi that you can charge on their own without having a charging cradle with it, which is fantastic. Some of the specs for the tool, it's nine, nine and a half inches long and about one and a half inches with two inches height. So it's a little bit oval, but really light tool, less than a pound, less than 10 inches long, two amp hour battery, keyless magnetic chuck, it does have a, the only thing about it is it does have a brushed motor rather than brushless, but again, this is a low speed, low power tool. It puts out about 55 inch pounds of torque, which is actually one of the highest in the lineup, if you can believe that, out of only a four volt system. Most of these are four volt tools, guys. I think three out of the five I'm going to be showing you are four volt tools. So that is something to consider. You're, you have a very limited amount of power that you can pull out of this thing, but I have not had it jam up on me yet. I've been using it constantly for a week now. 200 RPM, single speed gearbox, no frills, no muss, no fuss. Um, real quick, I apologize about the dead pixels here. I realize I haven't said anything about that yet. This is actually a monitor that my work sent me and it was damaged in shipping and they just haven't replaced it yet. So don't worry about that. We can still read most of what's on the screen. Anyway, this is a very, very simple tool. And you're only paying 25 bucks for it. So you have a 90-day guarantee from Home Depot. But the cool thing about Ryobi, you get a two-year limited warranty with the thing. All right? So that is a fantastic deal. You go back into Home Depot. If you have a problem with it, they'll swap it out for you. Okay? Or you know, I don't know how their warranty works. Usually you can just do that at Home Depot. Just go swap it out. You might need to send it back to them if you have an issue. But Ryobi builds good stuff. I can't, unless you really, really screw something up, I really can't see you needing to use any of the warranties we're going to be talking about for any of these tools. So two-year warranty, two amp hour battery, 55 inch pounds of torque at 200 RPM. Very simple tool. A fantastic buy. Now you can buy additional batteries or you can buy a pack with two batteries included for only $46.88. So I believe buying the batteries on their own, they're about 20 bucks a pop. I don't know for sure. This, this deal is currently out of stock right now at homedepot.com. So that is the Ryobi. 
Now we're going to move down the line and look at some different manufacturers' items uh, and some of the other ones that I considered. First and foremost, we have Milwaukee. That is the one that I looked at first. Now, you're going to notice right away that Milwaukee is a very similar profile tool, but it has a lot more features. You can tell just at a glance what you're going to be getting with this. You have a keyless chuck with, with a quick release on it, so not magnetic. You have a variable speed clutch at the front. You have a battery indicator on the side. You have two speed gearbox included in this thing. And rather than it being a twist lock style, it is just a, a, a hinge type pivot in the center here. But it's a dual profile straight or pistol grip tool. So very similar to the Ryobi in, in the way that it functions. Uh, it's also a four volt tool, but this has a two speed gearbox in it. So you get the same 200 RPM on low that you get with the Ryobi, or you can zip it up all the way to 600 RPM and really do some work quickly with this thing. Interesting thing about this though, is even with the two speed gearbox and the same low speed RPM as the Ryobi, you get 11 inch pounds lower torque. Now, if you guys have ever watched the torque test channel on YouTube, you know that the manufacturers tend to inflate these numbers or vary them a little bit. I don't know exactly what these things would measure out to if we put them on a power tool dyno like what uh, torque test channel uses. So I'm just going to take these numbers at face value. You do with it what you will, okay? I'm just going to read what's the specs directly off the websites. We all know that they might be fudged a little bit one way or the other. So that's just something to keep in mind here, okay? So this does come, the, the basic kit, the 2101-21, comes with the screwdriver, the battery, and the charger. And I think it might come with the, a couple of screwdriver bits, maybe. No, it does not. It's just the screwdriver, the charger, and the 2.0 battery. So... Same style of tool as the Ryobi, a two amp hour battery, the charger, and the tool. All right, that's about it. It's a four volt, it's a four volt series system. Now, I was immediately intrigued by this. Now, and you can see on the side that the, the mode of operation is a little bit different. Rather than having a paddle switch, you have your, your forward and reverse uh, switches right on the side here, which I do kind of like. I actually like kind of having that tactile side button style rather than just the paddle. But, you know, both of them work just fine. Like I said, I've been using the Ryobi for about a week now, and I've had no issues with it. So tomato, tomato, just whatever your preference is. But the biggest thing here is that when you pull this tool up over on Home Depot's website, holy cow, it's $149 for this thing. And on top of that, you have to have the charger with it. There's no onboard battery charging like what you get with the Ryobi. You have these standalone M4 series uh, 2 amp hour batteries. So that immediately was kind of a turnoff for me because I did not want to have, I already got a couple different Milwaukee chargers and Makita chargers. I didn't want to have a third one for just this one style of battery because I probably won't buy any other four volt tools. I just have no interest in it. I have other stuff that can compensate for that, you know? So there's no reason for me to buy this one tool and then have to have the charger with it. But that might not matter to you. You're getting a lot more features. You're getting the adjustable clutch. You're getting auto stop. So when you reach the torque specified on the clutch, it's going to power down the screwdriver so you can't overdrive anything. I mean, these are really, really advanced little handheld screwdrivers. So there's nothing wrong with these. Just not what I was looking for and certainly way out of my budget. And I keep bumping the camera mount because the camera mount sucks and it's shaking. So I apologize. Anyway, <laughs> so there we go. The Milwaukee was definitely a non-starter simply due to the price. Great tool, but more than what I was looking for and just didn't, you know, didn't really fit the bill perfectly like the, the Ryobi did. All right, so let's, let's move down to the lower end of the spectrum and have a look at what Harbor Freight offers. This is the Bauer 4-volt cordless quarter-inch hex drive screwdriver. Very, very similar setup to the Ryobi, whereas it's a convertible tool. You can do the twist lock thing. There's a button up top here that you can push on to, to twist that thing around and lock it into a straight profile, which ironically they don't have any pictures of on here. Um, and it does have a nice rubberized grip. Same style of chuck. It's got a magnetic hex drive chuck up front there, quarter inch, so all your regular screwdriver bits will fit in it. And the difference being here is that your forward and reverse buttons are actually on the sides, which can be a benefit or a detriment depending on how you look at it. I kind of like the side buttons, just, you know, it makes it easier to switch directions on the fly without having to break your grip and, and reach around to the back like on the Ryobi. But honestly, I've been using this tool from Ryobi for about a week now, like I've mentioned, and I haven't had any issues with that. It has not been a, an impediment. It's just something you get used to. So let's look up a few of the specs on this guy here real quick. 
Again, compared to the Ryobi, we have 180 RPM, lithium ion battery, 42.7 inch pounds of torque. So about on the same playing field as the Milwaukee, but still a little bit less and 13.3 inch pounds less than the Ryobi. So you're getting less for your money here in this case as well. The biggest thing I don't like about this tool is that there is no removable battery. It's a still it's still a four volt two amp hour battery, but it's it's internal and built into the tool, and you need to have a wall wart style charger with a built in cable and one of those little round ends that you plug into the tool. I guarantee you, at some point, that's going to get lost, and then you're dead in the water. Why is this playing so fast? Holy cow! You plug it in the front of the tool, and then of course the play button comes up and blocks it. But it plugs in right underneath the trigger, and there's a built in charging light and everything, so you can see when it's ready to go. But I do not like that. I don't like having integrated batteries in anything because if the battery dies, guess what? The tool is trash. So this is the epitome of really, really cheap throwaway style tools. Yeah, it's cheaper, but it's only five bucks cheaper, guys. For $24.97, go to Home Depot and get a much better tool from Ryobi. Bauer does okay with some other stuff, but I'm telling you, this kind of thing I would never purchase. Do what you will, it's your money, but for, for my money, for an extra five bucks, the Ryobi is far and away a better option, all right? So let's move on to another similarly priced tool from Skill. Here we have Skill's four volt rechargeable screwdriver. Now, if you're familiar with Skill, they make fantastic power tools, okay? Like their worm drive circular saws are absolutely phenomenal. They're wonderful tools, very, very well made. Unfortunately, this tool is not from that same lineup. This is a very, very cheap cordless screwdriver that's built with the same goal in mind, I think, as what the Bauer from Harbor Freight has to offer. Uh, you know, you got the same quarter inch hex drive magnetic chuck, you got onboard bit storage, you got your forward and reverse right here, but this is actually a step in the wrong direction for a couple of reasons, even compared to the Bauer. A, they make two different versions of this tool, a straight profile and a pistol grip profile, what they don't make is a convertible one that will go straight or pistol grip. Another problem, guess what? Ba Built-in battery. You absolutely can't remove the battery. You have to plug it in to charge it and it's built into the tool. Worst thing, guys, you see that? Micro USB. I'm sorry, but I cannot get behind any company's tool if they are building it with a rechargeable, non-removable battery that still uses micro USB in 2023. I can't do it. That is a ridiculously antiquated technology that should not be used in any kind of power tool environment because if, if you use it in the garage, if you use it out in the field for any reason, that tool is gonna to be garbage within weeks, I guarantee it, okay? So specs on this guy, very, very similar. 220 no load RPM speed, so slightly faster than the Ryobi, but not by much. Again, torque, only 36 inch pounds. Quarter inch hex drive magnetic chuck, has a single LED work light. It's only 5.7 inches long, but again, you can't convert it to the straight profile. So that's a little bit of a problem for me. Not hugely fond of that. So unfortunately, the skill is also gonna be a no-go for me. If, and if I had to pick one reason as to why, it would be because of that micro USB charger. I absolutely hate those things, in case I haven't made that abundantly clear already. I just think that is a move in the absolutely wrong direction for any manufacturer. Don't use micro USB if you want my business. I'm just, it's just not going to happen. So you can typically buy skill tools at Ace Hardware. So I have Ace's website pulled up. And this is actually more expensive than the Ryobi at $25.99. Still an inexpensive tool, but you're losing a lot of functionality. You have a built-in battery that you can't remove, and you have a stupid micro USB charger that plugs into the bottom of the tool. Just an absolute fail, in my opinion. Sorry, Skill, you make good stuff, but this is not one of your better items. Now let's move on to one of my favorite brands, Makita. All right, so here we go. Now we're moving up a little bit in voltage. Um, this one happens, instead of a four volt tool, this happens to be a 7.2 volt tool. This is a quarter inch driver um, that can be used for a variety of things. And I think Makita actually intended this for, for makers and hobbyists. It's a little bit more advanced than uh, what any of the other cheaper tools offer, but about on the same playing field as the Milwaukee with a few added features that I actually really like. Again, very similar to the Milwaukee, but you know, kind of trying to best them a little bit as Makita and Milwaukee tend to duel, duel it out with this kind of stuff. Um, but the motor delivers the most torque that we've seen yet at 71 inch pounds. So that's very impressive. You also have a 
auto stop clutch on the front here with I think it's like 18 or 20 different uh, torque settings and it's an auto stop clutch so as soon as you reach that torque number it's going to shut that driver down immediately so you get exactly the same torque on all the fasteners. I think that's a neat, uh, a very, very neat feature. And it's not unique to the Makita. I know a couple of other ones you've already looked at do the same thing. I think the Milwaukee does the same thing. But just like the Milwaukee, same story here, 200 RPM low gear, 650 RPM for their high range, all right? Only 1.2 pounds, very similar to the Milwaukee as far as the side profile and the way it bends. You have the same side buttons, you have the same hinge point right here. And I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't think the hinge point style designs are going to be as robust as the turn and lock style that uh, Ryobi has. I think that's a better design. Just personal preference. I think that if you have this thing on the ground and you accidentally step on it or whatever, you're going to be in a world of hurt because that hinge point is going to be the first thing to fail. Now, Makita builds outstanding power tools. They really do. So I'm not going to disparage this design choice at all because if they've built it, they've probably tested it, you know? Again, just like the Milwaukee, you do have a quick release chuck, which is slightly lower profile, which I like. So you can kind of tuck this thing in and get into areas without having that chuck sticking way out. So it may or may not make a difference, but if you're in a situation where it does make a difference, you're going to appreciate that lower profile. So going over to Home Depot's website here, um, we're going to get a little, bit, a little bit more sticker shock here. It's very expensive at $188.11. Quite a bit more expensive than everything else we've looked at so far. The difference here being you're getting two batteries. You're getting two batteries for your money with this guy, okay, for the $188. They don't offer a single battery kit that I've found on Home Depot's website. Again, those might be available elsewhere, but we're sticking to the big box stores for right now. So you're getting two batteries, a nice hard case, and a standalone charger for the $188, all right? Additionally, you're getting a three-year warranty from Makita. The downside to this is that you're only getting one and a half amp hour batteries versus two amp hour batteries, but that's all right. You're going to have two of them, so you can always have one ready to go, and you're getting a 7.2 volt tool rather than a four volt, so you're going to be able to do more work with the batteries that you have. So overall, I think this is a very, very good package from Makita. I love their hard cases. They're extremely robust. Uh, Makita really, really puts the, the really fine fit and finish details on the stuff that they sell. I really love my Makita tools. So moving on down to the specs here is a quick release quarter inch drive hex chuck, just like everything else we've looked at. It does come with a few tool bits, comes with that nice hard case, does have a brushed motor, just like everything else we've looked at. So no brushless stuff on the lower, on the lower amperage, lower voltage tools, which is pretty standard. Does have a built-in LED light in the front, 90-day warranty from Home Depot, three-year limited warranty from Makita themselves, 72 inch-pounds of output on this thing. Very, very powerful little tool for its size. 650 RPM, and I do believe that it has a two-speed gearbox, although I don't know where I, yeah, it does. Okay, so 200 RPM on low range, 650 RPM high range. You're still getting higher torque out of that higher voltage battery. So, Really, really good package from Makita, just again, out of my budget. We're gonna look at one more here, guys, so bear with me. We're gonna move on down the line to DeWalt. Now, if I had to pick a tool that kind of bridged the gap between Milwaukee, Makita, and Ryobi, I think the DeWalt would be it, if I'm being honest. This is a fantastic little tool. It's very, very well engineered and designed. I, I like what they've done with this. Very similar profile as far as it goes is when compared to the Ryobi you can convert it from straight to pistol grip style and it's a twist lock style which I think is a more robust design I really really like that has the quick release chuck on the front non-magnetic it does have an adjustable clutch up here battery indicator up top two-speed gearbox and this is an 8 volt tool compared to 7.2 or 4 Again, same deal as the other big, bigger brands. It's got a removable battery, but it does require a standalone charger to charge it up. Moving over to Home Depot's website for this guy, 99 bucks for this. Now, you're just getting that one battery, but you are getting the charger with it. You're getting 90 day Home Depot warranty, one year free service contract, which I actually didn't notice until just this second. So you're getting, that's basically a bumper to bumper warranty. So if anything breaks within that first year, they'll just replace it, which I think is pretty cool. That's neat. And then you get that extended three-year warranty from DeWalt. So moving on down to the specs here, go ahead and pull this up. So the battery and charger are included. You only get one battery. Difference here being the worst amp hour capacity out of all the brands that we've looked at. Only one amp hour and you only get one battery. 
That being said, you get the 90 day warranty from Home Depot, you get that one year free service contract, and you get that three year warranty from DeWalt. So all in all, you can buy extra batteries for it and you'll be in pretty good shape. Again, not something I wanted to do because I don't want to have a bunch of standalone chargers laying around, but if I, like I said, if I had to bridge the gap between the really expensive ones and the Ryobi, I'd probably pick the DeWalt. It's an eight volt tool. 430 RPM max. I don't know if it has a two-speed gearbox or a single. Probably just a single with a variable trigger if I had to take a guess. They use something called gyroscopic technology in their screwdrivers. Uh, motion activated variable speed and reversing control. I'm not really sure exactly how this thing works, but I have talked to other people who own these and they're very, very happy with them. Uh, I think that the gyroscopic feature on this just has something to do with the way the uh, torque is applied to both your hand and the fastener. I think it's kind of a safety thing, so you're not either ripping the fasteners out of something or driving them through whatever you're working on, and it's also not twisting it out of your hand. So I think that's kind of a neat thing. Um, DeWalt has really come a long way in the last 10 years or so with their power tools. They make really, really good stuff. Just, again, it, because it requires a standalone charger, it's just not something I was interested in adding to my lineup right now. But if I had to pick one out of all the other ones we looked at, if money was no object, I'd probably pick the Makita just because you're getting the most for your money in that in that situation. Uh, but if I was still on a budget, but I wanted to do a step up between the Ryobi and the really expensive ones, this bridges the gap perfectly at about a hundred bucks and you're going to get a lot for your money with this thing. You buy a couple extra batteries, throw them on the charger, you're good to go. So, you know, there's a lot of really good options out there, but again, for my money, the Ryobi is where it's at. So... Sorry for all the jaw jacking here. Let's go back over to the bench real quick, and I'll give you my final thoughts on this whole thing. All right, guys, I know I did a lot of talking in this video and a lot of explaining and a lot of going through different things, but to be completely honest with you, I really think for $25, you cannot go wrong buying this little Ryobi. This is a well-manufactured, well-engineered power tool made by one of the major brands. It'll probably last for the rest of my life. I mean, even though it doesn't have a brushless motor, this thing is a low speed tool, a low impact tool. It doesn't have some of the, you know, adjustability. It doesn't have the nice clutch. It doesn't have a two speed gearbox. It doesn't have any of the fancy features, but for the $25 that you're paying for this thing, you're getting a two year warranty. You're getting a rechargeable battery that doesn't require a standalone charger. You can just plug the charger right into the battery. It will fit any hex drive, to, you know, thing that you have, whether you have a Torx bit, a flathead, a Phillips, what have you. Any bit that has a quarter inch hex on it will fit in here. It's got a forward and reverse feature. It has two nice little flashlights built into the front that you can just kind of use. You can, in a power outage, you could use this thing to navigate your house by just holding that trigger down and the battery probably lasts for hours just running these two little tiny LEDs. And the way they have the LEDs positioned on here, I don't know if you can see that or not, but you really don't get that much shadowing from the bit, which is really nice. I mean, you see it a little bit, but it's not an actual shadow to the point where you can't see what you're putting the screwdriver bit onto. So they position these really well, really well thought out little tool from Ryobi. I've, you know, the only other Ryobi tool I have is that gigantic bench grinder, that eight inch bench grinder that I, I think I showed that off in my Mother's Day video. This was a few, two or three years ago now, I think, when I just started moving stuff into the uh, Connex behind our old house at the ranch when I was still working out there. Um, that Ryobi bench grinder, I got from my father-in-law for free when he shut his business down and that thing had been used and abused by his employees in their repair shop over at his place for probably 10 years before I got my hands on it and it still worked completely fine. Now I didn't end up replacing the bearings in it just because they were cheap and it was, I just wanted to do some maintenance on it and kind of spruce it up so I knew it was going to be fine. But that thing's an absolute beast. I've never stalled it. I mean, it's old enough now. That's that's old school Ryobi when they were still using the dark blue and gold color scheme on all their stuff before they switched to the yellow and gray. Um, so you know it's probably 20 years old. But it's a fantastic tool. Uh, Ryobi makes really, really good stuff. And after buying this little thing for the price, I might actually buy some of their other... Uh, four volt tools to go with these batteries. They make, I think, a, a little multi-tool, they make a little cutoff thing, a, a little grinder or whatever. Um, I don't know exactly what all they have in this lineup, but I might need to look into that since I don't have to have a charger. I can just buy some batteries and the tools themselves. And if they're as inexpensive as this one is, you can get a whole four volt Ryobi lineup for probably less than, you know, 150 bucks. You can have everything in their four volt lineup. If they're the price the same, I don't know. I need to look into that. But 
I'm really impressed with this little thing. Um, I don't have a whole lot left on this uh, Telecaster to take apart, but I'll give you a quick little example. Um, like the uh, little peg here for the strap. I mean, that's going into solid, solid basswood. Let me get that lined up here on the fastener. And that's in there pretty tight, and that zipped that right out. Just put that back into forward and put it back in. And this thing puts out, you know, only 55 inch pounds of torque, but that's plenty, plenty to get any screw out of this thing that you want. Now, I have not tried to take the neck off of this guitar uh, just yet, but we'll pull, I'm going to pull out one of these neck screws for you guys right here on camera. And if it's going to have a problem, we're going to find out right now because these are really tough. These go all the way through the body and the neck and hold the neck to the body. If you're not familiar with how a guitar is put together. But, oh yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Look how long these screws are too. Those are big fat screws going into solid wood. No issues whatsoever. We'll drive that right back in here. Boom. No problem at all. And that's on a battery that I have not charged since I originally got this thing out of the package. The battery was probably three quarters charged. I plugged it in for about 15 minutes and it was ready to go. Um, the battery on this thing, I guess I haven't mentioned that already, um, they'll just light up green right here around the charging port and that will flash while it's charging and then it just goes steady once it is charged up. So I am super impressed with this little tool from Ryobi. It is a fantastic buy at 25 bucks, and I cannot recommend it enough. If you don't have something like this in your lineup and you want to get into it for not a lot of money and this is just something you can keep in your utility drawer or your workbench down in the basement or wherever, this is fantastic for the money. 25 bucks out the door, comes with everything you need, comes with a couple of tool bits, and you're good to go. Um, another thing real quick that I found this thing is perfect for is using these deburring bits. I love these things. You guys have seen me use these a bunch, especially working on my drum set in the last couple of videos. Um, let me turn this back over so I can show you what I'm talking about. But going through all of this, like all my pit guard holes and everything, and I, there's going to be videos coming out about this. So I'll go into more detail about that in those videos, which should be coming out soon. Um, this thing is perfect for just going through. I've already done it. You can see just going through and just deburring, deburring these little holes where the pit guard goes in. And on top of that, deburring the pit guard itself, if you want those screws to sit down in there a little bit more flush, you can go through on this plastic and just very gently push on it. And you can put a nice uh, chamfer on your pit guard screw holes or any other hole that you want to deburr. So using deburring bits on this is a perfect use for this tool because it spins so slowly. You're not going to get that chatter and that, that nasty effect you get using a higher speed uh, impact driver. Uh, with these types of bits. So if I had had this before when I was uh, working on my drum set, I definitely would have used this instead of my impact driver because I got a lot of chatter on that old uh, that old uh, maple on those shells on my drum set. Anyway, that was just a quick example of what this thing can do. And there's, you know, a thousand and one other things that you can do with these things. But man, I'm super impressed for $25, guys. So there you go. There you have it. Do with that information what you will. Hopefully you found that uh, helpful going through all the other manufacturers. If you're still with me, thank you very much for sticking around and watching all the way to the end. I know that was a lot of information to throw at you in a short period of time. So um, with that, I'm going to shut up now and let you guys make your own decision on what's good for you. But I am super, super impressed with this little Ryobi. So go buy one of these things. Not sponsored. I just love it. Again, guys, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you guys for being here and, and sticking with me. Hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Be safe. Have fun. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya.